Hello beauties! Welcome back to Beauty Bible for another self-discovery chapter. Do you want to build a skincare routine tailored just for you based on the science behind skincare? Do you want to truly solve your skin problems and have smooth glowy glass skin once and for all? In today's video, we will be talking about basic skincare on how to have beautiful skin. Firstly, the science behind having nice skin followed by a quiz to help you find out your skin type and the type of skincare that suits your age. Then, we will explain the systemic skincare such as what diet and food we should eat and what vitamin supplements to take, as well as good habits to get flawless skin. Afterwards, we will discuss topical skincare and how to build a skincare routine, including what skincare products to use for each skin type, including cleanser, sunscreen, moisturizer, serums, other treatments, beauty devices, and beauty procedures, how to choose the right skincare, how to read skincare ingredients, and which brand of skincare to get. Universal features of beautiful skin include having clear skin with no visible pores that radiates a healthy natural glow. For the skin texture, it is smooth, elastic, and velvety to the touch. We should remember that all skin is beautiful. We are not seeking after a certain beauty standard, but beauty that reflects health. We shouldn't harm our body to conform to absurdly unachievable beauty standard. Instead, we aim to be healthy so that it's reflected on our beautiful skin. So what is the science behind this flawless skin and how can we achieve it? Skin texture is formed by crista cutis, which is the peak, and succus cutis, which is the groove. Hair pore is the intersection between two succus cutis. Sweat pore is on the top of crista cutis. The flatter our succus cutis is, and the more hydrated our crista cutis are, the light reflected on our skin causes glowiness and smoothness to the touch. However, the deeper our succus cutis and more dehydrated crista cutis are, our skin will appear dull and rough. They are made up of epidermal cells being glued together by different components, resembling bricks being stacked upon the foundation. We need to understand the structures in our skin that make it look smooth and soft on the outside, so we can use products to support and improve these structures. Our skin is made up of three layers. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer. Do you know that most skincare products only reach this layer and not the two deeper layers? We will explain what skincare products are worth getting later in the video. The epidermis consists of corneum stratum, where dead skin cells are being shed and replaced with new ones raised up from lower layers. This is also where we scrub and exfoliate to speed up this process. This layer is also responsible for maintaining our skin's hydration. It also consists of the lipid matrix, which is the barrier integrity that people always talk about. It helps to keep moisture in to prevent dehydration and keep out irritants. If your barrier integrity is disrupted, you may have sensitive skin. This layer also consists of acid mental and microbiome, and natural moisturizing factors NMFs, which helps with keeping our skin moisturized. Under that is the basal layer. This is where the skin cell cycle occurs. New cells are formed here and moved upwards to replace dead cells that are shed away. It also contains melanocytes, which give skin color, protect us against UV damage, and give our skin the sun-kissed tan, cute freckles, but also unwanted dark spots. The dermis is our middle skin layer. It is thick and forms the foundation we talked about before. 
Inside the dermis is the sebaceous gland, which secretes sebum. Although it is responsible for creating acne problems, it also helps maintain our lipid layer to prevent too much water evaporation from our skin. Fibroblast produces collagen and elastin fibers that give firmness and elasticity to our skin. Hyaluronic acid, a molecule not only in our skincare but also in our own skin, binds and retains water to keep our skin looking smooth and determines how hydrated our skin is. In skin aging, our dermal epidermal junction loses strength. Collagen and elastin can weaken due to age, moisture loss, environmental damages, etc. And epidermal HA disappears. Beauty should be inclusive and accessible to everyone, which is why skincare products, ingredients, and routines for different skin types will be explained in this video. The information may be a little bit overwhelming, so please feel free to use the comment box below to mark down the features that describe you and the ingredients or products right for you in each category to make it easier to follow. Our body is so fascinating and unique. What fits another person doesn't mean that it will fit you. That means all the good reviews and viral products you see online may not actually suit you. What's important is finding out what is the best for you, and finding out your skin type is a good first step to start from. To find your skin type, first wash your face, then dry it. Don't apply any skincare and observe how your skin reacts after a while. You can also dab blotting paper on your skin for more accuracy. If your skin feels dry and tight really quickly without applying moisturizer and may even experience flaking, you may have dry skin type. Your lovely skin has minimal pores, acne, and blackheads. Disruption of fatty lipid matrix in stratum corneum and underproduction of sebum causing water to evaporate faster from the skin. However, you may be more prone to dehydration, dullness, and early signs of aging skin, so pay extra attention to hydration and preventive skin care. If your entire face gets shiny and oily very soon after washing it, and there are oily spots on your blotting paper, you may have an oily skin type. Oily skins may have visible clogged large pores, shiny skin by afternoon, blackhead congestion, and you may want to wash your face frequently. Oily skin has enlarged sebaceous gland that overproduces sebum, causing excess oil. The bacteria, P. acne, feed on these sebum. Therefore, oily skin can also be acne prone. Although it may be a bit difficult to maintain, oily skin tends to have a stronger barrier, it is smoother, more glowy, and wrinkles resistant. If your skin feels normal after washing, it is not too dry or oily, it's just calm, soft, and comfortable. You are blessed with a normal skin type. Your skin is usually hydrated with a bright skin tone. It is not too flaky or oily without suffering from major skin problems. Focus on maintaining a simple, consistent routine and preventive skin care. If you have a shiny T-zone, which is your forehead and nose bridge, but normal or dry cheeks and your blotting paper has minor oil spots from your T-zone, you may have combination skin type. Some parts of your face get oily and others get dry, so it may feel uneven for you. This is because combination skins have more sebaceous glands in certain areas of the skin. Focus on having a mixed routine where you can use different products on different areas of your skin. For this video, follow the skincare products recommended for dry skin on your dry patches and oily skin products on your oily areas. If your skin is blotchy, gets dry, have redness and rashes easily, you may have sensitive skin. Fear not, having sensitive skin just means that you need to take extra care for your delicate skin. 
If you want to take proper care of your sensitive skin, stop using skincare that irritate you but store them. Observe and jot down the symptoms that your skin experience and possible causes for it other than the skincare, such as any environmental changes. Bring all of these information, including the skincare that irritated you, to a dermatologist to better diagnose which allergens irritate your skin. Your skin type is not restricted to one category. For example, your skin can be between normal to dry. This means that it's important to create a skincare routine suitable just for your lovely skin. My dear beauties, if you enjoy our content and would love to see more regular content, please feel free to become our patron to show your support for us. Let us know what exclusive content you would like us to offer on Patreon, such as special video requests, one-on-one -on -one consultation, beauty workshop and classes where we can grow together on this journey of seeking beauty. There is no doubt that genetics play a major factor when it comes to having beautiful skin. A key factor is keratinization rate. If it is normal, you will have smooth skin. If keratinization is too fast, then the natural moisturizing factors may not be enough, aka the glue quality may not be as good. Hence, easier shedding of skin causing dryness and rough skin texture. How active our melanin pigments are, as well as how much water and lipid content in our skin cells, and how fast skin cells turnover occurs, etc all make up our skin appearance. All of these are determined mainly by genetics, lifestyle, and diet. This is why you will see people who have been blessed with nice skin despite having unhealthy habits. But we shouldn't let that discourage us. Instead, we should be healthy and look our most beautiful, the best version of ourselves. Even if we may be dealt with not as good cards, how we play our game in life is more important. Which is why we are here to help you on your beauty journey. At different ages, your skin concerns will change. Therefore, your skincare routine will also be different. There are of course individual variations. But these are the general skin concerns and what you can look for when building your routine. At 15 to 18 years old, you shouldn't worry about aging or premature skin yet. Instead, focus on treating any hormonal acne, keeping your skin hydrated, and damage prevention. Stick to the basics of skincare, which we will explain later. If you don't have any specific skin concerns, there's no need for treatments for now. Our recommended skincare routine will be using daily cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, moisturizing mask 2-3 to three times per week, and acne treatment if needed. When you are 19 to 24 year old, you may be going out more and staying up till late. Focus on skin hydration and treating eye concerns such as dark circles and eye bags. This is the age where you should start having an awareness of skin prematuration and start incorporating treatments such as vitamin C and A into your routine. Focus on hydration, remove dead skin, treating acne, dark circles and fine lines if any. Consider using cleanser, toner, hydrating treatment and moisturizer. Again, hydration is always the key no matter which age you are at. Aging is a natural process. Your beauty is not defined by a few lines on your face. But if your goal is to have smooth skin even at an old age, this is where you should start to take skin aging seriously by introducing anti-aging products into your routine to prevent wrinkles and fine lines. Expression lines will start to show if you had unhealthy habits or didn't do preventive skin care earlier on. Focus on hydration anti-oxidation, anti-wrinkle, anti-fine line, and anti-aging. All of these should reflect on the treatments you use. Consider a skincare routine that includes cleanser, toner, 
eye cream, moisturizer, and exfoliation mask. This is the age where your early efforts reap rewards. Pay attention, my lovely beauties who are still in your 20s and 30s. This is the age where there is a greater difference between those who used sunscreen earlier on and paid attention to their skincare versus those that didn't. Keeping an active healthy lifestyle is more important than anything. You may experience fat loss causing saggy skin and double chin alongside hyperpigmentations such as dark spots. Choose skin lifting, firming and tightening treatments, anti-wrinkles and fine line products. Consider a regimen with cleanser, toner, different treatments including eye cream, moisturizer, and mask. The basic rule to skincare is, first, treat any problems. Our skin reflects our health. If our health is the underlying cause of our skin problem, we need to treat it first. Then, we want to maintain our skin condition by keeping it nice and stable. Last but not least is damage prevention. Aging is a natural biological process, and we can do so gracefully by minimizing disturbances to our beautiful skin from an early age. Plus, it's always better to prevent than to fix. Before you do any of the following, make sure your body is healthy. Check for any medical conditions such as vitamin, iron deficiency, and hormonal imbalances, etc. Follow your physician's instruction and take the right kind of vitamins. The premise of having beautiful skin is good health. You are what you eat. Chemical compounds in our food are broken down and synthesized to form the substances that make up our body. Here's the exciting part. Genetics play a major part in our beauty. But do you know that our diet can influence our epigenetics? We cannot change our gene sequences, but epigenetics can suppress or modify certain genes, which in turn affects how our genes are expressed. And some of these genes are even related to our appearance and skin health. For instance, research has found that epigenetics is related to skin aging and scientists are working hard to find out anti-aging secrets in epigenetics. But most importantly, our diet, environment, and lifestyle choices can influence our epigenetics, contributing to the beauty of our skin. If we want to have beautiful skin, of course we need to eat beautiful food that can help our skin, right? Firstly, don't overeat, especially food with a lot of sugar. Sugars are not just sugary food, but also carbohydrates such as bread, rice, and pasta, etc. More specifically, monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide sugars. They break down collagen and elastin, causing not only acne breakouts, but also wrinkles, dryness, and sagginess. This is why after you binge eat, your skin may look dull, bloated, and even have breakouts. Second of all, water is really important in keeping your skin hydrated, plump, and elastic. You can get a big water bottle of 1,500 to 2,000 millimeters and make sure you finish it every day. Bonus points if you drink warm water to improve digestion, circulation, and detoxification. Take small sips at regular intervals to avoid bloating. If you don't enjoy drinking plain water, Try adding lemons, herbs, or cucumbers to add flavor. The third rule is to always opt for whole food as much as possible. We understand that it is difficult to cook fresh whole food for every meal, but it doesn't make sense to wish for beautiful glowy skin when you put additives and preservatives present in processed food into your body. Eat pretty so you can be pretty. 
People always say eat healthy food when it comes to having beautiful skin, but let's narrow it down a little. Eat food like how we choose our skincare products. Here is a list of vitamins and food examples that you can find them in. Feel free to have a look and write down what food you prefer in the comment box to help you keep track of your results. Just like our skincare, you should change the ingredients and recipes in different seasons to get the best benefits for your skin and overall health. If you would like to learn more about seasonal recipes for skincare, subscribe and let us know! Is taking vitamin supplements worth it or a waste of money? Taking vitamin supplements is only useful if you are vitamin deficient. That said, if you have a normal, balanced diet, you probably won't benefit too much from taking vitamins. However, if you take too much vitamin, it may even do more harm than good. In addiction, taking vitamins cannot completely substitute eating vegetables and fruits itself. It is recommended to take a vitamin deficiency test and check with your physician to see if you need to take any vitamins. Collagen drinks are all the hype right now. They claim to help replenish the loss of our collagen to smoothen and plump up our skin. But do they actually work? Just because you are intaking collagen doesn't mean the collagen can get to your face. After you ingest collagen, it will be digested and broken down into peptides and amino acids, which are then used to compose different parts of your body. But it doesn't necessarily go to form more collagen in your skin. The pool of amino acids that are used to form collagen can also be obtained from daily consumption of protein food such as fish and chicken. If you truly want to help collagen production, eat vitamin C rich food instead. Vitamin C is essential for building collagen and needs to be obtained via diet. Here are some quantified examples. A daily intake of either 7 lemons, 2 kiwis, 4 oranges, 1 tomato, or 10 strawberries. Again, avoid overeating as vitamin C exceeding 3000 mg per day can cause nausea, vomit, and renal problems. Q10 is needed by the body but reduces with age. As an antioxidant that allows skin cells to carry out normal functions, it can be effective to take as supplements as well. Your lifestyle habits can influence your health which shows up on your skin. Do you ever sleep with your makeup on or stay up too late and even pulling all nighters? And do you usually wash your face in the shower? All of these are habits that may be terrible to your skin. Avoid making the same mistakes and start changing your habits to improve your skin. It is called beauty sleep for a reason. Getting a good beauty sleep is more important than any other skin care. Not getting sufficient, high quality sleep worsens your skin lowers your immune response that affects collagen production. It may even interfere liver detoxification and hinder blood circulation, causing pigmentation and uneven skin tone. Quality over quantity when it comes to sleeping. Because your body only starts secreting growth hormone in deep sleep, approximately 3 hours after you fall asleep which helps with keeping your skin healthy. Here are some tips for getting your beauty sleep. Getting 7 hours of sleep, preferably before 11pm, is ideal. If 11pm is impossible for you, try to at least keep a consistent sleeping schedule. Avoid exposure to blue light from electronics. 
Put electronics away at least 30 minutes from bedtime to improve your sleeping quality. Try to train yourself to sleep on your back. It may be hard at first, but it is definitely worth it. Sleeping on your side or on your stomach compresses your face. After a long period of time, it can increase the risk of getting fine lines and sagging skin. Invest in a pillow made from real silk, especially mulberry silk, which is the highest quality. Some recommendations can be found in the bio. Satin can be a more affordable alternative, though it is not as great as silk at retaining moisture. Compared to cotton, silk can better reduce friction, retain moisture in our skin, and to prevent wrinkles and fine lines. Of course, remember to wash frequently at least once a week to prevent bacteria and dirt accumulating. It will be best if you can minimize wearing heavy makeup. If you do, make sure to remove all makeup. Never go to sleep with any makeup on. Makeup products such as foundation and concealer may block your pores, increase free radicals that attack your skin cells, and cause breakouts. However, makeup remover can also harm your skin barrier, so don't leave them on for too long. Be gentle with your skin. Avoid rubbing back and forth when removing makeup. If the makeup is stubborn, resort to double cleansing by using an oil cleanser first followed by a water-based cleanser. Follow these steps to remove your makeup properly. First, wash your hands thoroughly with soap before touching your skin. Then dry your hands completely. Use a mascara remover for easy removal of mascara. Pour makeup remover onto a cotton pad. Place them on your eyelids for 10 seconds before wiping away your makeup. Repeat the same with your lips. Soak a Q-tip with makeup remover, then clean the corners of your eyes. Pump out oil-based makeup remover onto your palms and rub them together. Then, massage off your base makeup. Use minimal water to emulsify the oil cleanser and the makeup removed. Finally, rinse off everything with a water-based cleanser and water. Pat your face dry with facial tissues. Many beauties may neglect this part of your skincare routine. Remember to cleanse your face before stepping into the shower, because the higher temperature in the shower expands your pores. If the dirt are retained on your face, they can clog your pores more easily. Do not wash your face directly with your shower head. The water temperature in the shower is often too extreme for the delicate skin of your face. It is better to wash your face before you go into the shower. Do not change water temperature suddenly on your face. We will explain how to find out the right type of cleanser for you and how to wash your face with cleanser properly later in the video. Apply your skincare right after your shower while your skin is damp can ensure more effective absorption onto your clean face. The same applies for your body as well. Comment below if you want more tips on how to achieve smooth glowy skin for your body. When it comes to washing your hair, don't bend forward to wash your hair. This position may increase the chances of causing forehead wrinkles. If you want to get luxurious hair and know how to wash your hair properly, check out our other video on hair care. Having regular hot food baths can help improve blood circulation. This can help to achieve glowy rosy skin and getting a good night's sleep. Japanese people often enjoy saunas, onsens, and regular hot baths for this health reason as well. Having an active lifestyle is always a good idea for beautiful skin. Exercising increases blood flow that brings nutrients for glowy skin, reduces stress, and removes toxins and free radicals that contribute to skin aging. Before you buy that $200 face cream, make sure you drink enough water and eat nutritious food. 
Now let's talk skincare products. Particulates in the environment. Our own dead cells, sweat, and sebum accumulate on our face. They are irritants that can produce free radicals leading to aging. Applying products to our dirty face can trap dirt and bacteria on our face, causing breakouts. Therefore, our first step is to cleanse our face. A clean face establishes a good foundation of how effective our skincare routine is going to be. Molecules in the cleanser, which is surfactants, has hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. The hydrophobic tails bind to dirt and sebum on our skin that's mainly made of oil, while the hydrophilic heads bind to water molecules, so that when we wash our face, the dirt and sebum won't linger on our skin and will be removed along with the water. Maintaining a balance between cleansing power and gentleness is important. We want to make sure the cleanser can effectively clean our face while it doesn't strip off our natural oil. To see if a cleanser is white for you or not, after washing your face with your cleanser, you should feel no tightness in your skin. Instead, it should be calm and comfortable, and it should also feel clean for at least several hours. If you have a budget, you don't need to splurge a lot on cleansers. As long as they can clean your face effectively and doesn't irritate your skin or leave your skin dry, go for it. Next, we will talk about which type of cleanser suits us. Refer back to your result for the skin type quiz to see which type of cleanser suits you. If you have dry skin, choose cleansing milk, micellar water, cleansing oil, and cleansing palm. Since you don't have a lot of natural oil, you can use your cleanser in the nighttime routine and wash your face with just water in the morning. If you have oily skin, go for micellar water, gel cleansers, and occasionally a cleansing scrub. If you have acne-prone skin, stay with non-comedogenic, axinogenic irritating cleansers without allergens. Try to limit your face washing to twice a day. Don't overwash it. If you have normal skin, your skin isn't too fussy about the type of cleanser you use. If you don't have a clue, feel free to go for micellar water and cleansing milk. Cleanse once to twice a day. If you have combination skin, choose micellar water, a gentle gel wash, or cream cleanser. Cleanse twice a day. If your skin is sensitive, use micellar water. Pay attention to frequency-free, non-foaming cream cleansers as well. For those with rosacea, avoid alcohol and use very gentle cleansers only. Use once to twice a day. Choose surfactants that your skin can tolerate. For sensitive, very dry skin, look for SDL glucosides, cocoa and acetates and amino acids. Avoid sulfates, SLS, and SLES, especially if you're sensitive to it, which is your skin feels very dry after using it. Our skin pH is slightly acidic at below 5, around 4.7. Two high pH in products can penetrate our skin deeper, causing irritation and disrupt our normal acid mental. It can also mess us with our healthy microflora and may cause skin problems such as asthma. More water evaporates from our skin, causing a tightness after cleansing. This is especially important for those with sensitive skin. Remember to check for the pH of the cleanser. It should be similar to your skin's at around 5 and lower than 6. We usually use tap water to wash our face. Tap water can be soft or hard and be more alkaline than our skin pH. Hot water has high mineral composition including heavy metals that may irritate our skin, causing itchiness and inflammation, such as chlorine that can strip sebum from our skin. If you suffer from skin problems that just won't go away no matter what you do, you can try to check to see if your local water supply is soft or hard. Installing water filtration on your tap to soften water and filter out harsh minerals may be useful, especially for those with sensitive skin types. If you want to go further, 
Invest in your skincare by using bottled distilled water or ionized water on your face only, which is pure and free from irritants. Now we will show you how to wash your face properly. Use the same amount as the size of a dime. Add the cleanser into a foaming bottle. Foam up the cleanser till it is not too liquidy. Or you can add the cleanser to a foaming net. Rub the foaming net together until it foams up. Place the foam on your face. Start from the chin, do circles and go upwards. Focus on cleaning your T and V zone as well as the sides of your nose where there are more sebum production. Don't forget your hairline as well. The foam helps to reduce friction between your hands and your face to prevent premature facial lines and the micro bubbles help to clean impurities. Wipe away bubbles with your hands. Rinse off the cleanser with mildly slightly cooler temperature, not too hot or too cold. Pat dry your face gently immediately after. Avoid rubbing your face or reusing towels as bacteria may accumulate in them if you put them out in the air and don't change them daily. Cleansing brushes were all the hype a while ago. Do they actually work or does the physical friction harm our skin? Electronic cleansing brushes are found to not only improve skin's hydration and even help with acne lesions. For those with normal to oily skin or those that wear heavy makeup and want to boost the cleansing power, feel free to add this device into your regimen. Remember to use good quality gentle bristles. Listen to your skin and see if it's a good option to add in. There are three types of components in our moisturizers, humectants, emollients, and occlusives. Our skin has natural moisturizing factors to bind water molecules, help skin cell turnover, and draw water to keep our skin hydrated. Humectants and moisturizers support them and do the same thing. Emollients have oily texture and help to lock in the moisture even more. Occlusives have the heaviest texture out of the three and act as a water-resistant barrier for even longer. Your moisturizer should help hydrate your skin for at least a few hours. If it doesn't, you can add in a face oil or use a moisturizer with higher ratio of emollients and occlusives. And your skin shouldn't feel suffocated and heavy. If you do, go for a lighter texture. There is no need to have fancy ingredients in your daily moisturizer as long as it suits your skin type, it's fragrance free and does its job well. Humectants with lower molecular weight can penetrate into the skin and hydrate better, but may cause more irritation. For example, if you have dry skin, you can opt for a lower molecular weight, while those with sensitive skin can choose ones with higher molecular weights. Glycerin with a low molecular weight can penetrate into the lipid matrix and hydrate our skin effectively. The molecular weight increases with lactic acid urea, and pefino, collagen. This is why our topical collagen actually does not penetrate our skin but act as a barrier. And finally, hyaluronic acid with a very high molecular weight which retains on our skin surface to lock in moisture. An honorable mention is ceramide which is a great ingredient in moisturizers. Humectants usually come in forms of serum, essence, mist, and ampoules. Emollients usually come in form of a face oil. If you have dry skin type, you can opt for face oil made with squalane, camellia, olive, argan, sweet almond, shear, marula, jojoba, apricot kernel, and macadamia nut. Oily skin can go for squalane, rosehip seed, chia, cranberry, and blackcurrant oil. Meanwhile, sensitive skin types can use squalane oils. You can add a few drops into your usual moisturizer to better seal in hydration. 
Remember to keep them in a dry, cool, dark storage space to prevent them from going bad. Occlusives form a heavy water resistant barrier to sealy moisture. It is suitable for dry skin mainly, such as lotion and cream. If you have oily to combination skin and would like to include this into your routine during dry seasons, go for a gel cream or palm. Normal skin types can go for gel or gel cream textures, and sensitive skins can opt for the simplest petroleum palm with cholesterol and fatty acids which are more soothing components. Common occlusives found in skin care are petroleum, butter, wax, and palms such as Vaseline, mineral oil, and sheer butter. In general, pick a foundation moisturizer such as gel creams, lotions, and creams, with gel cream made up of mostly humectants and creams mostly of occlusives. Plus an additional hydration product. Waters with the lightest texture include toner, micellar, mist, and essence. Gels include hydrating cells, serums, and ampoules. Mask. Oils include face oil and oil serum. And palm with the heaviest texture, such as butter. Although it is good to layer, remember to pick at most two products from the water and gels category. Sometimes, less is more when it comes to skin care. You can find the moisturizer suitable for you by using the below formula. According to your skin type and preferences, you can pick a type of product that you like in the categories mentioned before to build your skincare routine. For example, if you have dry skin and your main concern is hydration, you can choose a cream texture moisturizer. Adding in a hydrating serum and a few drops of squalane or camellia face oils. During dry seasons, use a palm to spot treat dry patches. Comment below what your results are. The 9 steps Korean skincare routine to glass skin has been quite popular worldwide in recent years. Please remember that consistency is important when it comes to skincare. 9 steps daily may be very time and effort consuming. Plus, layering with more products means more skin irritation may occur. And you should also do thorough research on the synergistic effect of using different skincare products. The climatic condition and lifestyle in Korea might also be very different from what you have, so this routine may not suit everyone. The amount of moisturizer used should be the same size as an almond. Rub the moisturizer on your palms. Gently pat on your cheeks then chin and forehead, your nose and mouth areas, and finally, don't forget your neck as well. Or, place moisturizer on your forehead, nose, chin, and cheeks in an uplift motion, gently spread out the moisturizer. For dry skin types, you can use the hot towel method. Apply a thick layer of moisturizer on your face, Place a plastic wrap on your face, then place a hot towel on top and wait for 10 to 15 minutes. You can use your moisturizer in the wet compression method for a deep hydration treatment. First, completely soak stretchable cotton pads in a gentle toner. Note that these cotton pads are different from the ones for removing makeup. Place one on your chin, then on your mouth, on your forehead, and finally on your nose. Cut on both sides of your nose. Then apply a thick layer of moisturizer on top. Wait for three to five minutes. Then flip over to the moisturizer side. Sunscreen should be the ultimate essential of your skincare routine. Even if you are staying indoors, there are UV light rays coming in from your windows if you are sitting next to one. Even if it's cloudy, UV light rays are not visible. UV intensity on cloudy days may be even higher than those on sunny days. 
If you're on higher altitude with thinner atmosphere, such as on the mountain, skiing, or on a plane, the UVs may even be stronger. My lovely beauties, whether you have pale or tanned skin and want a sun-kissed glow or not, please apply sunscreen to protect your beautiful skin from premature aging and sun damage. As for my lovely people of color, although your beautiful dark skin does not get sunburned as easily, excessive sun exposure is still bad for premature aging and skin damage, so please apply sunscreen as well. UV light rays consist of UVC, UVB, and UVA. 5% of the UV reaching the epidermis of our skin is UVB, causes sunburn and tanning, while the other 95% is UVA reaching our dermis that causes photoaging. The fibroblasts in dermis trigger inflammatory response to break down collagen. Our skin also thickens and overproduces melanin, causing hyperpigmentation and dullness. Sunscreen absorbs UVA and UVB so they won't get into our skin. Prevention is always better than repairing. Wearing sunscreen can prevent our skin from not only photoaging, such as wrinkles, age spots, and sagging, but also skin cancer. No amount of serum or essence can save your skin if it's not protected from sun damage. Similar to moisturizer and cleanser, just stick to the basics with this one. To actually protect your skin from sun damage, reapply frequently, and an adequate amount is more important than what brand of sunscreen you purchase. Your sunscreen suits you if it doesn't feel too greasy. Otherwise, look for lighter textures. Your skin should not be irritated. If it is, switch from chemical to mineral sunscreens. And your skin shouldn't feel congested. If it does, switch to lower SPF. Higher SPF is not always better. SPF is not directly proportional to the amount of UV light rays blocked. So, just because you use a higher SPF doesn't mean you block significantly more UV light rays. Instead, higher SPF comes with a greasier texture that may be less comfortable. It's crucial to balance good SPF and having a sunscreen you don't mind putting on every few hours. SPF 30 to 50 is a good range. Look for sunscreens with the words Brock Spectrum or PA3 Plus or above to cover protection against UVA. For UK brands that use boot star rating, go for 3 stars or above. And for Australian or European brands, look for the symbols UVA and PDD. You can choose sunscreens with different textures according to what your skin prefers. We recommend going for a sunscreen with a lighter texture so it doesn't feel greasy and you don't hate putting it on. Dry skin types may suit chemical sunscreens with a thicker moisturizing texture. Avoid matte sunscreens that may be too drying for you. Oily skins feel more comfortable in thinner textures. Usually, European or Asian beauty brands offer sunscreens with thinner sheer texture. For those with sensitive skins, the most important thing to keep in mind is to use alcohol-free sunscreens with simple ingredients. If you want to protect your skin against blue light from electronic devices or infrared rays, go for adding antioxidants into your regimen. We will go into more details in the additive section of this video. If you want to take an extra step, not only can you apply UV lip balm to prevent lips hyperpigmentation, but also use physical sun protection such as fissa, arm sleeves, umbrella, or even mask, perfectly made in silk that is gentle on the skin. We have linked some non-sponsored products below if you are interested. 
As the last step in your morning routine, apply 1 fourth teaspoon as dots on your face. Spread to form a uniform white cast. Don't forget your neck and your lips. Reapply every 2 hours. Once the basics are covered, these treatments can be added to your regimen to tackle your skin concerns specifically. As we have previously mentioned, less can sometimes be more in skin care. If there are too many active ingredients in your routine, it may irritate your skin. Do up to 5 steps in your daily routine. Avoid changing your skincare products too rapidly or overlayering too many products. There is a higher risk for irritation and may not be as effective as expected. Choose products with prices that reflect the quality of ingredients used. Cheaper options may not have high enough concentration of active ingredients to deliver the results desired or may be too irritating for your skin. Adjust your skincare and treatments used according to the seasons. For example, in summer, use mist, essence, and serums to keep things light. And in winter, incorporate more face oils, butters, and products with a heavier texture that can seal in moisture. During cold and dry seasons, use cleansing oil, palm, and less chemical exfoliation. If the climate is hot and dry, switch to light and hydrating products. Use sunscreen, cream cleansers, and water-based serums. And dry skin type can invest in a humidifier at home. But if it's hot and humid, it is a good time to target anti-aging by using more gel cleansers, gel cream, serum, essence, micelle waters, and toners. Toners provide an even deeper cleanse after using your facial cleanser and can prepare your skin for better absorption of your skincare products. It is used in the past to balance our skin pH after we used alkaline soap to cleanse our face. However, the cleansers used now are much better suited for our skin pH. Toners can remove oil, makeup, dirt, and other impurities from your face. But since they can be drying, we will recommend using toners with no alcohol or fragrance. Dry skin types can use toners made of humectants such as HA, glycerin, glycolic acid, and vitamin E. Oily skin can aim for those with tea tree, BHA, AHA, niacinamide, and witch hazel. Combination skin can go for HA, glycerin, glycolic acid, vitamin C, and E. Sensitive skin can stick to gentler formula with rose water and aloe vera. Use toner after you cleanse your face and before any other skin care. You can pour it on cotton pads and wipe gently across your face. Or simply pour some onto your palm and pat it onto your face directly. Essence is a water-based, lightweight product that is used after cleanser and toner. With mostly natural ingredients such as botanicals, vitamins, minerals, lipids, glycerin, and HA etc. Unlike serum that contain high concentration of active ingredients and toners that can be drying, it rarely causes adverse effects, therefore suits all skin types. It is especially great for skin hydration. Think of it as pumping the skin up with nutrients and water before you seal in everything with a moisturizer. Other than that, it can also support function of other products in a skincare routine, as well as protecting skin barrier and maintaining a healthy pH balance. Essence should be applied after toner and before any serums. Add 4 to 5 squirts or drops onto your palm. Use your fingers to put some onto your face. Then rub your palms together and press onto your face. Then bring it down to the neck.
The function of a toner is to further cleanse the skin after using a cleanser and to balance the skin tone. An essence hydrates our skin to a deeper level. Meanwhile, a serum targets specific issues. The texture of them are also very different. Toner is the lightest and most watery, followed by essence. Serum is the thickest and most viscous. It penetrates deeper into the skin with the help of a moisturizer afterwards. Therefore, for oily acne-prone skin types, toners can be great for an additional cleansing action. Dry skin types can incorporate essences into your routine. And serums are good for targeting any specific skin issues we have, especially for mature aging skin. Emulsions are a mixture of products that do not dissolve in each other. Most are oil suspended in water. They are lightweight, water-based, and has a thin gel-like texture. Think of them as lighter version of moisturizers. Common ingredients found in emulsions include glycerin, metacasylside, which are antioxidant, especially for sensitive and acne-prone skin, paffino, and HA. Not only are emulsions non-comodogenic, they are also absorbed by the skin quickly which is a good choice to use in the morning before applying makeup instead of a heavy moisturizer that may mess with your makeup. It also helps to hydrate and seal moisture in without being too heavy on the skin. They can also be formulated with active ingredients to target specific skin concerns. Emulsions are a great alternative to moisturizers for oily and acne-prone skin where oil and creams may feel too heavy, especially during hot and humid seasons. For dry skin and all skin types during drier seasons, emulsions can help to provide an extra hydration boost. Combination skin can apply emulsion to entire face first, then use moisturizer on dry patches. The amount of emulsion used is the same as the size of a peanut. It should be applied after essence and serum, but before moisturizer. It can be applied in the same way as we do for moisturizers. Facial mask infuse our skin pores so they can soak up more products. Ingredients from face mask are in contact with our skin for a longer period of time. This creates a film on our skin that traps moisture in ingredients so that the ingredients can penetrate better, providing a higher concentration and more intense action than our other skincare counterparts. Choose your facial mask depending on your skin type, what you want to improve or achieve, and adjust accordingly to the seasons. Always avoid irritating ingredients such as alcohol, mint, fragrance, parabens, dyes, and essential oils. Sheet masks are recommended for mature or dry and inflamed skin for moisturizing. However, for oily skin or acne-prone skin, because of the material of the sheets, it may be more likely to trap bacteria on the skin surface. It also prevents water evaporation. Peel off masks such as clay are great at cleansing and can control sebum production. Therefore, it is recommended for oily skin and combination skin. Combination skin types should mix and match their face mask, where clay mask can be applied to your T-zone and hydrogels can be applied to dry patches. Rinse off mask include thin scrub, which is exfoliating, moisturizing such as cream and gel mask, Toning and cleansing masks such as mud mask. Ingredients such as oatmeal and aloe vera can help to soothe skin and promote hydration. Therefore, it's recommended for dry skin types. Meanwhile, clay and charcoal can soak up excess oil for oily skin types. Other than the ones mentioned, dry skin types can also look for HA, sheer butter, and avocado in face mask. 
oily skin can look for sulfide, glycolic acid, and silicylic acid in face mask to reduce pore clogging. Hydrogels are recommended for those with sensitive skin because it helps to cool and soften skin with less skin irritation. It can also reduce oiliness and acne, as well as improving skin complexion. Remember to change up your mask routine according to the seasons. During cold and dried winter, sheet masks can be used to moisturize skin and keep it hydrated. In hot and humid summer days, use clay masks to remove excess oil and hydrogels for light hydration after a day at the beach. Gentle moisturizing and hydrating masks are okay to use frequently or even daily, except for sensitive skin types. While cleansing masks should not be used on your skin for more than 15 minutes to prevent irritation and skin damage. You should also alternate use between days. Sleeping masks can give dry skin and overnight deep hydration. Hydration and brightening mask can be used in the evening, as this reduces your skin's exposure to the sun, so the mask can be more effective. On the other hand, mask with stronger active ingredients should only be used 1-3 to three times per week. Always follow the instructions on the packaging. And before you put your face mask on, make sure your face is clean. Face masks are usually used after cleanser, toner, and serum, but before moisturizer, or it can replace your moisturizer. Remember the skin cell cycle we talked about earlier? When skin turnover slows down, that cells accumulate on our skin surface, giving a rough texture. It disrupts our skin barrier and makes it hard to retain water. The resulting dehydration slows down our cell turnover even more. Chemical exfoliants are acids that weaken bonds between dead cells so they can be shed and help improve pigmentation, acne, and collagen production. When it comes to choosing your exfoliator, chemical exfoliators are better than physical ones because they are more gentle and can avoid excessive exfoliation. Avoid overly irritating your skin. Choose products that clearly state the amount of acid. Smaller molecular sizes are more effective, but don't jump into using a powerful exfoliator with high acid concentration. Take baby steps. Start at low concentration, then work your way up once your skin has adapted to it. Lower pH may be more effective, but it can be too irritating, so usually around pH 3.5 is recommended. AHA is a water-soluble acid that can penetrate epidermis. It can stimulate collagen production and has moisturizing properties as well. However, it leaves the skin more vulnerable to sun sensitivity. Examples include glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid, malic acid, and tartaric acid. They differ by molecular sizes. For dry skin, 5 to 10% glycolic acid, more than 8% lactic and mandelic acid is recommended. BHA is oil soluble and can exfoliate to pore level to unclog pores and remove excessive sebum. It has antimicrobial and anti inflammatory properties, which is recommended for acne prone oily skin, especially salicyclic acid at 0.2 to 2%. PHA is another water-soluble acid that stays on the skin surface. It only lightly exfoliates the skin surface and does not make skin too sun-like sensitive. Therefore, it is the most gentle out of the three. Lactobionic acid, gluconolactone are very gentle and good options for dry or sensitive skin. 5-10% lactic acid is recommended for dry skin, 
while 10% gluconolactone is recommended for sensitive skin. Here's a graph for you to find out which chemical exfoliator suits you according to your skin type. For example, if you have dry skin, start off with 5-10% to lactic acid. In 2-3 to three weeks, if there is no irritation, switch to 5-10% to glycolic acid. If your skin stings, gets dry or reddens, either reduce the concentration or use it less frequently. Acids under 10% can be applied daily, but higher concentration should not be used for more than once per week. After cleansing your face, pour the chemical exfoliator on cotton pads or use the wipes directly. Gently pat it over your face, especially on areas with excess sebum production, such as your T-zone and chin. Remember to follow it up with a gentle hydrating moisturizer. If you have dry patches that you don't want to exfoliate, you can apply palm on those areas beforehand so the acids cannot penetrate through. Remember to be more diligent with your sunscreen after exfoliation. Your skin is more sensitive to sun damage. As we age, collagen crosslinks modifies and break down. This causes wrinkles, sagging, and other signs of aging skin, which is a natural process that occurs with time even without sun damage. Retinol are small molecules that penetrate into our epidermis and dermis to interact with receptors that improve fibroblast proliferation, prevent collagen degradation, and promote production. These are some of the prescription or over-the-counter retinoids. If you suffer from acne, 0.1% adapini is a good choice. If you suffer from severe acne and want prescription retinoids, please visit the dermatologist. Some in-store retinoids include retinol palmitate, the precursor of retinol. It is more stable, but the weakest form of retinol and needs to be transformed to retinodide to retinoic acid to work. Retinol is the golden standard for cosmetic retinoids. Meanwhile, retinol is more potent than retinol, but is even less stable and difficult to find. Retinoids are unstable. They are sensitive to light, air, and heat. They can degrade easily, so the product packaging is really important. Choosing a packaging that reduces exposure to air, light, and heat to sustain shelf life and efficacy. Aluminium squeeze tube is better than a pump bottle, which is better than dropper, because droppers expose the retinoids inside to air every time while using. However, jars is a big no-no. Look for products that clearly state the amount of retinol. To introduce retinol into your routine, you can start with 0.1 to 0.3% for 2 to 3 times per week. Stop if you experience any irritation such as stinkiness, flaking, and redness. If you're still sensitive, look into gentler alternatives such as hydroxypinacolone retinoid or bacuchio. Maintain between 0.1 to 1%. If there is no irritation, slowly work your way up 0.5 to 1% 2 to 3 times per week. Adding supporting ingredients such as niacinamide into your skincare routine is also important to soothe any potential irritation. The amount used should be the same as the size of a pea. Apply it onto your face and gently pat the product into your skin. UV rays generate free radicals which damage cells. Applying topical antioxidants such as vitamin C bind these free radicals to prevent their attack on our skin cells. 
Benefits of vitamin C include antioxidation that helps with photoprotection, skin brightening, and boosts collagen production, which makes it the perfect addition into your skincare regimen. L-ascorbic acid at 5-10% is the gold standard antioxidant for skin care. It can be paired up to use with vitamin E and ferulic acid. They work synergistically to enhance and slow down vitamin C degradation. Vitamin C comes in water, oil, or powder form. Water is usually the go-to, but oil can be more stable. Powder form is the most stable, but it can get a little bit messy. It's important to make sure that vitamin C we use is fresh and has not oxidized yet. A fresh vitamin C serum has no color or a faint yellow tint. Oxidized vitamin C becomes orange-brown in color. It turns more acidic that can irritate and harm our skin. Therefore, it's time to throw away the old and buy a fresh serum when this happens. We recommend using products that are not yellow to begin with. Some manufacturers may have added tint, making it difficult to tell if it has oxidized or not. To extend the shelf life of your vitamin C, store it in a cool, dark, dry place. Make sure to close properly after usage. Like retinoids, the packaging matters too. The expiry date is usually around 3 to 4 months. So mark down when you first open the product and replace it when it's time. Go for a dark and opaque bottle with protective seal. Pump bottle is better than droppers, which again exposes our product to the air. It's okay to splurge a little bit more when it comes to active ingredients such as vitamin C to make sure you get what you paid for. To introduce vitamin C into your regimen, start with 5% LAA. Feel free to use with vitamin E and ferulic acid. If there is no irritation, go up to 15% LAA. If you are concerned with aging, go for sodium asorbide phosphate. If you are concerned with pigmentation, go for asorbide glucoside. Use vitamin C in the morning as the first step after cleansing your face. Use 4 to 5 drops of vitamin C. Gently pat and massage it onto your face, including the sides of your nose. Again, don't forget your neck as well. Niacinamide is linked to many biological pathways, including one against glycation. Glycation is the process of free sugars causing advanced glycation ends (AGEs) impacting skin tissue elasticity. Niacinamide can inhibit melanosomes from transferring pigments that causes hyperpigmentation and help with skin brightening by working alongside vitamin C. It also controls oil not just by absorbing oil but also controls sebum production and reduced pore appearance. Last but not least, it also boosts skin hydration, promotes quarantine synthesis and stimulates ceramides to strengthen skin barrier. This is a must-have for all skin types. It's a relatively less irritating but totally effective skincare active that can be easily introduced into your routine. Its anti-inflammatory feature can even soothe asthma. To introduce niacinamide into your regimen, if you have sensitive skin, start with 2%. Other skin types can start higher at 4 to 5%. Too much of a good thing, aka exceeding 10% niacinamide in your skincare routine can be bad. Note how much niacinamide already exists in your current skincare. Instead of getting a niacinamide serum, try to get a moisturizer that already has niacinamide in it. A lot of other different active ingredients are being used in skincare products that sound advanced or exotic, but do they actually work? If you choose to go for these alternate active ingredients, they should be on the top half of your ingredient list. 
Select products that clearly state the percentage of active ingredients instead of ambiguous terms such as rich in something something. For anti-aging products, caffeine is getting all the hype. But these still need more scientific research to prove their efficacy, so take them with a grain of salt. While the following look like they have good potential, so it doesn't hurt to try them out. For treating acne and soothing inflammation, green tea, milk crystal, peptides, turmeric, and chamomile seem to work really well. CoQ10 and lipolic acid are potential antioxidants. If you're looking to hydrate your skin, keep an eye out for aloe, manuka honey, and hyaluronic acid. Many natural botanical ingredients that are used historically for generations in ancient cultures. There are many more beauty secrets that are not in mainstream media. If you're interested in them, please subscribe and stay tuned. Consistency is important. If something works, stick to it. Keeping your skin stable is more preferable than hopping on trends. At least 28 to 40 days are needed for results to show depending on your age and skin cell cycle, and it may be longer for specific skin concerns. Look at the ingredients and how your own skin responds to the product instead of the refuse the company and packaging. Skincare is empirical. We can look at science and data, but at the end of the day, your own experience by listening to your body and seeing how it reacts is the most important. Always patch test in store on your inner arm first or buy a smaller size first. Start slow. Add one product at a time into your routine. Wait and observe before adding another one. Otherwise, it is difficult to identify which product causes irritation. If you feel like skin is not feeling great, don't retry the same product several times, hoping your skin will get used to it. Or take the purge before it gets better. Resort back to simple skin care. Adjust according to your budget. As we have mentioned before, if you must, Spend more on active ingredients and save up on cleanser, sunscreen, and moisturizer. What has worked for others does not mean it will work well on your skin. A $10 face cream may work for other skin but not yours. Natural doesn't mean better. Botanicals can have toxins or allergens too. In fact, their composition is far more complex that it is harder to do scientific testing. To check for allergy behind your ear, check for irritation your sensitive area, check for pore clogging and acne area where you experience this the most. Try to do this for a few days before applying to your entire face. If not, wait for at least 24 hours to see if there is any bad reaction. The sequence of ingredients go from most to least amount on the ingredient list. Here's an example of an ingredient list. Since aqua is the first ingredient on our list, this means that most of the product is made of water. Zetio alcohol is the second ingredient in the list, which means that after water, this product consists mostly of zetio alcohol. Our desired active ingredient should be at least in top 7 of the ingredient list to ensure there is enough of it. For example, if we want niacinamide in our moisturizer, and this is the ingredient list of the product we are interested in, we can see that niacinamide is at the 5th position, so we will most likely get the effects of niacinamide from this product. However, if we look at this ingredient list, we can see that niacinamide is all the way back, so we probably won't buy this product. Sometimes, similar skincare ingredients may have different names. 
For example, ethanol ascorbic acid and L absorbic acid are both vitamin C, but different products may use either. A great website to check the ingredients in your skincare is Inside Colder. It rates the ingredients inside mainstream skincare products and tell you what each ingredients do. Sometimes practicability may need to come before aesthetics in skincare. Having skincare that does wonders on your skin while it sits pretty on the shelf is the ideal. But when it comes to choosing between the two, although it may look good on your shelf, a product with a prettier packaging doesn't mean it has better ingredients. Instead, focus on how the ingredients are stored inside its container. It may be more economical to buy a large jar, but keep in mind the shelf life. It is better to use them fresh. To find out the expiry date of your skincare product, check out the jar symbol. The number inside indicates how long your product can last. The M stands for month. If there is no jar symbol, check out the batch number and search for the manufacturer date of your batch. Mark down which date you opened your products. Throw them away when it reaches the expiry date and replace with new ones. Are DIY skincare better than commercial products? Most DIYs can be just as costly, requires lots of efforts and makes a mess, but also uncertain efficacy and cause more harm than good such as irritating your skin causing breakouts. Remember to do your own scientific-based research before any DIYs. Or better, leave things to the professional skincare manufacturers. Are medical-grade products better? Again, ingredients are more important. Aside from the higher price tag and modern packaging, look for the reason to use medical-grade products. Is it backed with more clinical studies? Are the ingredients used more concentrated? Skincare products are important for our daily maintenance, but they may be insufficient to reach deeper skin layers. That's why it's always good to get a little help. There are various at-home beauty devices. Aside from the electronic cleansing brush we mentioned, there are also facial toning device, scrub bar, microcurrent, and microneedling devices, as well as the recently viral gua sha, facial roller, and LED lights, etc. There are also beauty procedures that are more invasive and must be carried out by a medical professional, or non-invasive procedures that you can easily get at beauty salons. Some examples are hydrofacials, chemical peels, firm age, laser therapy, HIFU, injectable dermal fillers, etc. They can be quite overwhelming for skincare beginners, but feel free to let us know if you would like a fully detailed video on the latest skincare procedures and whether they are effective or not according to the latest scientific research. If you have specific skin concerns such as inflammatory or cystic acne, asthma, anti-aging, etc., check out the complete skincare guide tailor-made for different skin concerns on our channel. If we want to have beautiful skin, of course we will need to nurture it to keep it smooth, delicate, and fabulous. If we want to achieve the best results with our skincare, we can try to reduce or eliminate doing these things that cause skin damage. Smoking. Being too stressed and excessive sun exposure without protection creates free radicals, contributing to not only skin deterioration but also damage our health. Avoid touching your face before cleaning your hands or restrain from letting other people touch your face. As we have mentioned, our beauty sleep is essential for our skin to be healthy. On the other hand, if we stay up too late or pull an all-nighter, that is a one-way ticket to duller skin and breakouts. Don't pop your pimples or skin blemishes such as whiteheads and blackheads.
as this will lead to scarring and will be harder to fix. So avoid it at all costs if you can. Thank you for letting us join you on your journey of seeking beauty. Beauty goes way beyond skin deep. Take good care of yourself, eat pretty, and feel pretty for your beauty to shine through. No matter which part along the journey of skincare you are at, always, always cultivate self-love for our own skin. Until we meet again next time,